Hello and welcome to Physics Teacher. With the Waterloo contest quickly approaching, you can find example problems to any of them on my channel. In this video, I'm going to go over three example problems, all of which were questions on past Chem 13 exam contests, which is the contest available for grade 12 chemistry students. All three questions that we're going to go over today revolve around the concept of Le Chatelier's principle. So let's get started. All right, in our first question, we have the following reaction reaches equilibrium in a closed reaction vessel at 200 degrees Celsius. All right, so our enthalpy for the reaction is negative, so we know that this is an exothermic reaction. Which of the following actions causes the reaction to proceed from left to right? So we want to go in this direction in order to restore equilibrium. Now, there are three things we can do to a system. We can change the pressure by either um, increasing or decreasing the volume, like in example A. Uh, we could change the temperature, like in example D. Or we can add or remove um, products or reactants, like in B, C, or E. So we're going to have to go over each problem. Let's do them one at a time. So for part A, we're going to increase the volume, which is changing the pressure. Now, Le Chatelier's principle says, increasing the pressure, which is decreasing the volume, will cause a shift in the direction of fewer molecules. So in this case, we're increasing the volume, therefore decreasing the pressure. And that's going to cause a shift in the direction of more molecules. So in our reactants, we have one and three, so four molecules. And in our product, we have one and one, so only two. So this is going to actually put the reaction from right to left. So we are not interested in A. Uh, let's try, let's go down to D. Increasing the temperature. Okay. Le Chatelier's principle says increasing the temperature of a system at equilibrium will increase the rate of the endothermic reaction. So the endothermic reaction, since this reaction from left to right is exothermic, the endothermic reaction would be in this direction from right to left. So again, we are not interested in that either. Let's move on. Let's try B. Adding some methane gas to the system with volume and temperature held constant. So Le Chatelier's principle says for concentrations, increasing the concentration of the reactants will shift equilibrium in favor of the products and vice versa. So here we have methane gas, which is right here. So if we add more methane gas, we are going to shift the reaction to the reactants. So again, from right to left. So we are not interested in this one. Let's try E. What if we remove CO? Okay, we remove carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is right here. But if we remove it, notice that this is talking about in an increase in the concentration. So if we were to remove it, then we're going to be in favor of those reactants if we remove reactants. So that is going to be again, oh, we're not having much luck here, from right to left. So hopefully C is the answer here. Uh, adding some hydrogen gas. So where's hydrogen? Hydrogen's right here. If we add hydrogen, uh, so adding hydrogen is going to uh, be in favor, shift equilibrium to be in favor of the products. So that is from left to right. So for this question, our answer is C. Let's try another one. So in this question, it says the reaction below reaches equilibrium in a closed reaction vessel. And again, our enthalpy chain is negative, so we have an exothermic reaction. Which of the following actions causes an increase in the value of the equilibrium constant? Okay, so our equilibrium constant. Now, if you remember our equation for our equilibrium constant, it is equal to the concentration or the product of the concentration of the products. So we're going to have, I'm just going to write all the products up here, divided by the product of the concentrations for the reactants. So this is a roundabout way of saying if we want to increase the value of Kc, well, then we want to 
increase the products and decrease the reactants. If we did that, that ratio would be larger and our K value would increase. So if we want to increase the products, we want the reaction to go from left to right. So that's a tricky way of asking this question. At first, it doesn't seem like it's a Le Chatelier's problem, but it is. So let's look at these actions. Adding some carbon dioxide. So here's some carbon dioxide. This is our concentration one. If we increase the concentration of carbon dioxide, then it's going to favor the reactants. So that is going to go from left to right. So we don't want that one. All right, I'm going to skip option two for a second, and let's look at option three, increasing the temperature. If we increase the temperature of the system at equilibrium, we're going to increase the rate of the endothermic reaction. So the forward reaction is our exothermic, so the reverse reaction would be our endothermic. So again, we're going in this direction, which is not what we want. Now let's look at number two. Number two is the tricky part. This is one where everyone makes a mistake. So transferring the reaction mixture to a vessel with large volume. So increasing the volume means you're decreasing the pressure. Right? And if you decrease the pressure, uh, that causes a shift in the reaction of more molecules. So you would think that would cause a shift in the reaction forward. But this is for gases. This is where everyone makes the mistake. They forget that this is not a gas, neither is this, like in our previous example. Uh, when we have a solid and we decrease the pressure, we are going to shift the direction of the reaction to create more of that solid. So we are going again in a reverse direction. So this is actually wrong. And that leaves us with our answer as E, not B which is what many and most students end up choosing. So be careful with this one. So let's look at our last example, another type, different type of question, but still Le, Le Chatelier's principle. Which of the following equilibria shifts to the left, so reverse favored reaction, when external pressure is increased and shifts to the right when temperature is increased. So we have to look at two different things, temperature increase and pressure increase. Now remember when temperature increases, uh, we are preferring the endothermic reaction. And when pressure increases, uh, we are going in the direction of fewer molecules. Now in this case, we have, looks like every reaction is gases, so we don't have to worry about that issue with the previous question. All right, so Let's look at one at a time because it needs to look at both. Okay, so both need to be true. Let's look at pressure. If pressure increases, we're going to go into the direction of fewer molecules. So we want to want the ones where the fewer molecules are in our reactants. So for A, it looks like we have one mole, one mole, and two moles. So we don't need to worry about a shift in this case. Uh, for B, we have two, one, and two two so the fewer molecules is to the left b is a possible solution for c we have one one and one so the fewer moles is to the right so c we don't care about a d we have one a three and then two so again the fewer moles is to the right so we do not care about d and for e we have two Two and one, so fewer moles is to the left. E is a possibility. So we've narrowed our choices to B and E. Let's look at temperature increase, because we can see one, we have the enthalpy less than zero, so our forward reaction is exothermic, and the other, the em enthalpy is greater than zero, so our forward reaction is endothermic. Now with temperature increasing, we are going to favor the endothermic reaction. So that is going to be E, not 